Hey everybody, Jeremy Siskin here. I'm the author of this book, Playing Solo Jazz Piano. It is the hot item of the season. Make sure that you get a copy of it. ASAP, I always appreciate it when people buy from my website. Now, today is interesting. Today we're gonna talk about the modes, uh, which is this concept that I feel like uh, people studying jazz are always obsessed with the modes. And especially people who don't play jazz, who are interested in jazz, think that the modes are a big deal. And it is important that we talk about them a lot. So you need to understand the vocabulary. Um, and I'm going to try to help you and give you a couple of different ways to look at the modes, as well as an exercise that you can use to practice the modes in a way that is maybe more meaningful, hopefully, than the way that you've uh, approached them so far. So let's dive in. Okay. <clears throat> so probably most of you understand that the modes are these seven note scales that have different intervallic patterns than the major scale. And we call them the modes because we're starting a major scale on a different note. So it's a mode of a major scale. And people often get confused in terms of terminology. So what I've done on this list is on the left-hand side, I put what note the mode starts and ends on. So um, we'll start with Ionian that starts and ends on C. And we always name the mode after the note that it starts and ends on. But what's confusing to people is that we also have a parent scale. The parent scale, what I'm calling, uh, what I'm calling the parent scale, is the scale upon which the mode is based. What key signature are we applying? How are we getting the sharps and flats? And often when we learn, we start with modes of the C major scale. So. As I now start this on D, the parent scale is going to remain the same. So I'm still going to be using the key signature of C major, the notes of the C major scale. Got a little weird creep in there. Got to get a wire out. Um, and I can start and end on different notes. And I'll get different modes. Okay, so remember, we're always going to name the mode just as it says on the left side, left hand side of this page, starts on and then the mode name. So C Ionian, D Dorian, E Phrygian, F Lyric. Okay. And then on the right hand side of the page, what's probably the most important is what we're actually going to do with the mode. So a lot of jazz theory is associating chords with scales, right? And so these modes are scales that we might use on some of these chords. And so um, just to try to clarify something that comes up, I'll tell people that you can improvise using the C, ma C major scale over a D minor 7, a G7, and a C major, a 2, 5, 1, and C. <clears throat> and that's absolutely true. But it's weird, to, it's weird and sometimes it feels like an extra step to tell people, use a C major scale to improvise on a D minor. So what do we say instead? We say use D Dorian. It's two ways of essentially saying the same thing. And of course, when you're improvising, and I know this is review for a lot of people, you don't have to start on a D for D Dorian, right? And you don't have to start on a C if we say C major. These are just sets of notes that we can access and we can start anywhere as we're improvising. So in a sense, you know, modes are just this kind of convenience that instead of saying we're using the C major scale starting on D, we can kind of quickly say, oh, we're just going to use D Dorian for the D minor set. Um, and so looking at this chart, let me just go over these one by one. So major, you're probably very familiar with. The major scale is the same as we call it the Ionian scale sometimes, just to be fancy. Um, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Just if we're talking about other modes, it's nice to have a modal name. And so we use this over a C major seven traditionally. Dorian um, is a minor sound, and we use this with minor two chords. And you're going to notice that what happens is we're basically going to use each of these modes with the Roman numeral that corresponds with where we are in the scale. So D Dorian, we're going to use on the second chord of the C major scale, right? The two chord, D minor. E Phrygian, we can use on a three chord. If it's kind of more in an isolated territory, for example, if we're not playing in a tonal, we're not, we don't know what key we're in, or 
you know, we're not moving from three to six to two to five in a predictable way. Um, a chord where we use phrygian a lot is a sus seven flat nine. <laughs> and notice that uh, phrygian has a very Spanish sound to it because of that half step between the first and second scale, de scale degrees. And there's something called a phrygian cadence, which would be something like going from something based on the minor second, the half step above, down to uh, the main note. Um, so very Spanish sound for Phrygian. Uh, Lydian goes with a major seven, sharp 11, or if it's a four chord, it just goes with a normal major seven. So one of the things that you're hearing me say, and let me just say it more plainly, is that when you have a diatonic chord, a chord built just directly from the scale, um, you can usually use that chord's major scale. No, let me say it again. I can do it better. When you're playing diatonic harmony, harmony is built from a scale, you usually are going to want to stick with the scale from the one key as you play. So if I'm in C, and this is interesting, hopefully, because it means that context is everything. And you can see that there's three places, I'll highlight them for you, where I can imagine playing a different mode with a minor seven chord. Whether it's the two chord, the three chord, or the six chord is going to help to determine uh, which mode I'm going to use. So uh, it's not so simple as every time you see a minor seven chord play a Dory. Okay. So if you have a four chord in a key, um, Lydian is usually the way to go. beginning of the tune Just Friends starts on the four chord. So could I play just a regular Ionian major seven at that first chord? Sounds totally fine. Could I play Lydian? Also sounds fine. It's going to be a matter of taste and you do have decisions like that to make. Um, by the way, just in, in case you're thinking about uh, the sounds of these modes, uh, my teacher always talked about Lydian as being the film scoring mode, that if you have any kind of a film score scene, to kind of play around with. It's just a slightly different sound than your major seven, uh, than your normal major scale. Uh, Mixolydian can go a dominant or it also goes beautifully with any kind of a sus chord. Um, so for example, you know, if you're playing Maiden Voyage by Herbie Hancock, usually you're gonna wanna use Mixolydian with a sus seven. And some people uh, ask in those cases, you know, doesn't the sus mean to avoid the third? And it actually doesn't melodically. I mean, in the chord, you want to leave out the third in favor of the fourth. But melodically, that third is totally fair game. Aeolian could go with a six chord. You know, so if you have this one, six, two, five, I certainly wouldn't try to play an F sharp. I wouldn't try to play Dorian on that six chord. sound like it's in place, right? It's out of place. So I would stick with, effectively you're playing a Aeolian when you get to that chord. Um, and then you've got Locrian, probably the least used of the mode. It has a flat fifth. And it's got the most alterations. Um, if I'm comparing B major to B Locrian, um, as we'll, we'll see later, um, it has the most uh, changed notes. And we often use that with half diminished chords. It's one of a handful of options we might use with half diminished chords. So that's one traditional way to look at the modes. You start on C, you play that same scale, starting at different places. 
But what if instead of making the parent scale always the same, right? Here the parent scale is always C major. What if we made the starting note always the same? I think we get actually a more useful version of the mode here. And I want to do this uh, with you because we get some kind of fun results. And so what we're going to do here, instead of keeping track of the chords, because we've already kind of got the chords for each mode, we're going to keep track of which tones are flat and sharp and how many. And we're going to put it in an order of how many notes are flatted and sharp. So Ionian compared C Ionian compared to C major has no alterations, right? It's the same thing. Okay. If we want one flat, we're going to go to Mixolydian. So that has a flat 7. And that parent scale is going to be F major now if we're starting it on C. Right? It's all white keys except for a B flat, so that means we're coming from F major. If we're going to continue on, Dorian has these two flats. It has flat 3 and a flat 7. And if you're good with your key signatures, you know that the key signature with two flats is B flat major. Okay, maybe you're starting to see a pattern emerging as you're looking at these parent scales. Um, so then we would go to Aeolian, which has three flats, flat three, flat six, and flat seven. Three flats is E flat major. From there, we would add another flat and we'd go to Phrygian. And that has flat 2, flat 3, flat 6, and flat 7. And so, can you see now, in these in terms of these parent scales, we're moving through the circle of fifths. We're just going from C major to F major to B flat major to E flat to A flat. So you could probably guess that D flat is going to be next. And indeed it is. So Locrian, now we're going to add a flat 5. And so now we have everything other than the four is flatted. And one explanation for this is the mode that's missing, which is Lydian, right? And Lydian, we had a sharp four. So many theorists think of Lydian as actually, that's where you start, and then you start flatting the four with Ionian. And so we could rewrite this if we wanted. And we would have flat four for Ionian, flat four, flat seven, flat four, flat three, flat seven, etc., etc. Right? And Lydian is based on G major because we have this one sharp, right? If we start on C. And so what I think is fun, um, and you might have figured out if you've been watching a bunch of my videos that I have a sick idea of fun musically. Um, is that we could take this pattern that's emerging with our parent scale and we could go beyond these modes of the major scale to what would be next. So, and the other reason why this is interesting is because you might be noticing as I play these that the higher we get here, the more sharps we add, the brighter it gets. The more flats we add, the darker it gets. Um, and that makes sense, actually. We think of sharps as being bright generally and flats as being dark. So as we move this way, we go from brighter to darker. So again, here's Lydian, Ionian, Mixolydian, Dorian, Aeolian. Can you hear it getting darker? Phrygian, Locrian. And so it's fun to think, what if we push these even further, would we get even brighter and darker? And I think the answer is generally yes. So, you know, going up in the circle of fists, we could, let's just go three more up, which is plenty. We'll get to D, A, and E. And um, I think sometimes people do refer to this one as the super Lydian. Um, I'm not smart enough to know names for these. So this would have a sharp one, C sharp, right? 
and a sharp four. That's weird to think of, you know, a mode or a scale as having a sharp one, but I think if you gave it some time, you could get used to it. because A major has G sharp. It's very sharp. And then, you know, continuing on, let's see, this would have a sharp two, I guess. Sharp four, sharp five. So I'm just gonna play, now I'm playing E major scale over C. right? Because modes, we're intentionally starting a scale at different places. And here we're not doing that. We're actually just playing a different scale um, over, uh, over a chord. Uh, but I think it's, you know, uh, you can see that there's a reason that we're doing it now. We're thinking, oh, what would be next in the pattern? What would be brighter? What would be darker? And especially it's interesting to go brighter because we have so many modes that are darker <laughs> in C, but only that one that goes brighter than our traditional major sound. But we could also look at what gets darker down here. So we could go to G flat. Um, there actually is a different thing called the super Locrian. Um, and then what's interesting is that it kind of comes back to E. <laughs> so, uh, so what I'm saying is the G flat mode wouldn't be called the super Locrian. That's something else. That's the seventh mode of the melodic minor. Um, but we could have G. Did I do the right? I didn't do that right. I'm sorry. Places there. Yeah, I really need to hear this as a minor chord. I need to make that adjustment. So, okay, so that's a little bit of kind of fun stuff to play around with in terms of how can you change this concept of the modes. But coming back to our original kind of set of modes, um, starting from Lydian and going to Locrian, it's great to practice improvising, staying on the same note, staying on the same uh, starts on note, and then moving through the modes in your improvisation. So I'm gonna just play kind of a open drone C and G in the left hand, and I'm gonna start with Lydian. And I encourage you guys as you do this, you know, pretend like you're exploring a new um, room that you've never been in. And you're just kind of going to look in the corners, you're going to look in the closets, you're going to see, you know, how does each note lie in here? Which ones feel tense? Which ones feel resolved? And in the modes, you always want to figure out what triads and what seventh chords are there. So for example, I just used B minor. I'll give you guys a better view of the keyboard in case you're curious. You know, D major is certainly one you hear in your... Coming in. 
acoustics, that changes the color entirely to get to Aeolian. Aeolian. Sometimes, um, you know, especially in more modern music, there's these long solo sections on just a single chord. And I've uh, taken master classes with artists who have suggested that what you want to do is you want to kind of move one by one through the modes, just changing one note at a time um, from brighter to, usually from brighter to darker in that direction that I um, just, uh, just demonstrated moving. Um, you know, and it might be that if it's a minor thing, you start on Dorian and you just move to Locrian. Maybe if it's a, you know, if it's a major thing, maybe you start on Ionian, move to Lydian, and then maybe you could even inch into that super Lydian kind of a thing. Um, by the way, I'm not sure if that's like a correct technical term. Don't quote me on that. Um, so I hope that that, you know, gives you some ideas in terms of practicing the modes. Of course, that's only in C. You want to master that, uh, those transitions between modes in every key. So that hopefully gives you a little bit of a different perspective. Um, I always appreciate your comments and your likes. If you feel like visiting jeremysiskin.com and picking up a copy of this beauty, I've got to get rid of this one. So somebody, uh, this has your name on it. Um, and of course, I will gladly sign it for you. Uh, and you can get it from Amazon as well. But I always appreciate it when people buy it directly from me. Everybody have a great, great week. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.